Hey there, this is Kamal. And in this video, we're gonna see how we can install Angular on our system. And also we'll see how we can set it up and create a new project. So let's get this started. All right, so now in order to actually install Angular, you need to have Node.js installed on your system. So let's first actually install Node.js, then we'll see how we can install Angular. So I'll open my browser and I'll type in Node.js. So click on the first link. In this, you can actually download two versions of this. Either you can go with the LTS version or you can go with the current version. My recommendation would be to go with the LTS one, which is going to be the stable version. So I'll click on that and I'll click on save and that will be downloaded. So once that is downloaded, go to your downloads folder and click on the downloaded icon. And that's going to start the installation process. So you can click on next and click on accept terms and conditions. You can give the location of where you want this to be installed. I'll leave it as default. Click on next once again. And you can actually leave everything as default. Click on next. And that should actually install everything that is required. So I'll click on install and that's going to start the installation process. Okay, so now let's click on finish and that should be done. Now let's go back to the browser and now let's see how we can install Angular. So in order to actually install Angular, we have to go to the Angular website. So let's search for that. So the website is going to be angular.io. So I'll open the website and inside this, go to the documentation section and you can go to getting started and set up. And inside the setup section, you'll have the commands that you need to type in to actually install Angular. So the first command to actually install Angular is this npm install Angular CLI. So this is going to actually install the command line interface that is present inside of Angular. So I'll copy this command and I'll go to my desktop and I'll click on here and I'll open my terminal. So for this, you can actually use your Windows terminal as well. That is your partial, but I'll be using a different kind of terminal, but you can go with your terminal if you want. So in this, what you can do is that you can just paste the command that you had just copied. So I'll paste it here. That is npm install angular CLI. So I'll remove any spaces if it has any. Then I'll click on enter. And that's gonna actually install the angular as well as the command line interface for me to access. So once that is done, you're pretty much done with installation of angular. So now let's see how we can actually create a new application using the command line interface that we got through angular. So in order to create the application, the command that is provided to us is actually present inside the documentation section. So let's go back to the documentation. And in here, you'll see that there's a command here called as ng new space uh, app name, right? That is a project name. So I'll open my terminal once again. Then I type here ng give a space new and a app name. So in this case, I'm gonna type it as blog because we'll be creating a blog application. So I'll type that out and I'll click on enter. And that's gonna actually create a blog application on my desktop because right now I'm inside my desktop, okay? So there's gonna be a few questions as well. So the first question that is asking is whether you want to, you know, add Angular routing or not. We'll see what Angular routing is later in the upcoming videos. But for now, you can just type in Y, click on enter. And then it's gonna ask which style sheet that you wanna use. I'll leave it as default, that is CSS, and I'll click on enter. Now that should actually start installing the required packages and then it's gonna create that application on your desktop. So if you go to your desktop as well, you'll see that there's a folder called as blog, right? So this is the folder that is being created right now. Once this is completely done, you can access that folder. All right, so now that is done, we can actually open our folder and in here we can actually see the files that are present inside of this, right? So there might be few people who might have issues when installing this. That might be when you're actually installing Angular or when you're creating a project as well. So some of the common issues that you might actually come across is one wherein it's going to ask for your Git account information. Like it's going to say that Git is not recognized as an internal or external command. In that case, it's a warning. So you can just leave it as it is. You don't need to worry about that. And that's generally, you know, it's going to appear when you're trying to create a new project. So at that point, you can just leave it as it is. It doesn't matter. So the project will be still created anyways. Apart from that, if there's an error saying that the scripts could not be run in the system because you don't have enough permission, then what you have to do is that you have to actually go to your browser and search for set execution policy. So once you search for that, you'll come across a Microsoft documentation based on that. So click on the docs for that. And in here, there's a command that you have to actually execute. So this is the command for that. So copy this first line. This is the command. So this command will be available in the description as well. You can copy it from there. Now what you have to do is that you have to go to your Windows PowerShell with admin privileges. So what I mean by that is that you can right click on your Windows system here, Windows icon, and click on Windows PowerShell admin. So these letters will generally appear on the Windows system. So if you have a Windows system, then you might come across these. 
So once you open your Windows PowerShell with admin privileges, you'll be inside your Windows System32 folder. Now inside this, you can right click here and that will be pasted on your terminal. Then what you can do is you click on enter and that's going to ask whether you want to change the execution policy or not. I'll type in Y and I'll click on enter and that's going to change my execution policy. And now I'll be able to install Angular or any other application that I want, right? So now you can close this off. Then you can go back to your desktop or anywhere that you want. Then you can start installation of the Angular or the application as well. And that's going to install without any issues. All right, so now let's close this off and let's actually open this blog application inside the VS Code. So I'll right click here and I'll click on open with code. All right, so as you can see here, we have some files on the left hand side. And these are the files that you generally get when you create an Angular application. Now, before going further and understanding what we have here, let's actually see the output of this Angular application, which is there by default, right? So for that, what I'll do is that I'll open my integrated terminal inside my VS Code. So I'll click on new terminal. Now that's going to open my PowerShell. What I'll do here is that I'll type in a command called as ng space serve. So type it out first. And that is going to actually initialize the server and open your Angular application in that server. So wait for a while. This is going to take some time to actually compile this whole thing. So you might have to wait for a bit. All right. So once that is done, you're going to see a message saying compiled successfully. So if you have that message, that means that everything is done perfectly. Now you can actually see the output. So in order to actually see the output, you'll have to go to a particular URL. So there's this URL present above this, right? So this is the URL where your particular application is being hosted right now. So you can actually copy this link from here and you can go to your browser and paste it inside your URL bar. And this is what you're going to see. So let me zoom in a bit. All right. So as you can see here, we have some data present on the screen, right? So this is the basic boilerplate template that you're going to get when you actually create a new Angular application. Okay. So let's go back to the project structure and I'll explain how this is actually being shown in the browser. So I'll close up the terminal for now. So one thing that you have to understand here is that all of your logic is present inside the source folder. So we have a SRC folder in my left hand side menu, right? So this is where the whole code is present. So inside this, there is one file that is called as index.html. So this index.html is the starting point of your whole website. So we have the doc type, HTML head and body, right? So we have the basic boilerplate template of a HTML application. The only thing that is new here is that we have a tag called as app hyphen root. So this app hyphen root is not part of the HTML. That's why we haven't learned about this before, but instead this is actually created by us. Okay. So this is actually created by default on Angular. So this is where the data is actually being shown. Okay. And we'll see what this is in the later videos. But for now, you need to understand that this is the starting point of your whole website. Okay. If I go to the browser as well, and if I, you know, right click here and click on view page source, you'll see that we have the data here, right? This is the same file that you're seeing here. There is the index page. All right. So before closing this off, I just wanted to say that this video was made in collaboration with Packet Prep. So Packet Prep is a training and placement company located in Hyderabad. And these videos were specifically made for the job guarantee training program that they have going on right now. And that is the full stack Java developer program. So apart from these free video lectures, they also have some premium content as well, like lecture notes, practice and test papers for you to get better at your core concepts. And they also have offline as well as online classes for this program. And they also conduct multiple demo sessions as well. So you can attend any of these demo sessions and understand the things they are teaching as well as the training approach firsthand. So if you're interested, I've provided the website link in the description down below. You can go there and check them out. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did, then please the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.